Your name is Larry. Larry Laffer. You've arrived in beautiful lost wages without luggage. The airline lost it. Without a hotel reservation, you forgot to get one. And without a clue, you've never had one. You exit the cab. The hot, dry air of lost wages hits you in the face like a hard slap. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. After your cab ride, you may be low on funds, but you've got the looks, the lines, and the leisure suit. You're in town to find true love. And if you happen to get lucky along the way, that's okay. After all, you're nearly 40. And still a bird... Still untouched by human hands. Look out, ladies! I'm finding love tonight! Uh-oh, that's Bear, the dog. In Lost Wages, Bear is famous for getting off his leash and spreading sunshine wherever he goes. If you act in a non-threatening manner long enough, maybe he'll come over and say hi sometime. Aw, oh, that's Bear, always spreading sunshine. You quickly check your fly by zipping it up and down a few times. Zips up, zips down in an instant for easy access. <laughs> yeah, baby. You rummage around in the dumpster, but you don't see anything valuable aside from some cocktail shrimp that might still be edible. <coughs> hmm, that's good shrimp! You rummage around... Hmm! You rummage... Hmm. Yep, feels like your classic sidewalk end. Ah, 
The street continues on in both directions, but you don't see any amusing destinations within walking distance. This sign identifies the bar as lefties, where people drink liberally. Don't leave. A sense of foreboding washes over your heart when your eyes slowly examine this dark alley that seems to be just outside every public area in Lost Wages. Larry, didn't your mother ever warn you about going into dark alleys? Open! Nothing happens. Maybe you're thinking of that other game, Leisure Suit Larry and the Demon of Agrabah. The pussy is avoiding you. Sound familiar? Here, kitty, 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 kitty! The cat ignores you choosing to go about licking itself, looking cynical, and being alert for food. Aww, it thinks it's people from L.A. The cat isn't letting you get close enough to sniff it. I know! If I can't sniff it, how do I know which one of us is dominant? Holy cannoli! It smells like a fire hydrant just walked in here. He looks like someone from your distant past, but you just can't put your finger on him. Good thing, too! One of Lefty's conquests? He appears to be perverted, twisted, and sick. You instantly take a liking to him. That's Jordan Lee. He's here frequently, and they say he shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. Curiously, in Florida, Arizona, and Montana, just to watch him die is a valid legal defense against homicide. Hey, loser! Wanna go get into some serious fucking trouble? Hey! No! That's a shame. I know some major going down tonight. It's gonna be awesome. That sounds boss. No, it doesn't. I guess people don't mess around with you. They misjudge me. For instance, just because I know 1001 ways to inflict pain on the human body doesn't mean I like to hurt people. I suddenly have to go. I get that a lot. The gentleman filling his face is Tom King, a regular at lefties and the kind of guy you love to have with you at the movies, so you don't have to talk to him for two hours. Looking at me? Can't blame you, actually. I got that handsome, roguish look. It's a curse. But hey, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> of course I do. Yeah, I'm sure you know lots of handsome guys in my situation. This international bon vivant, Francois de Keat, is one of Lefty's big investors. And being from Europe, he's extremely cool. Wow! You're cool! I know, right? It's almost too cool how cool I am, n'est-ce pas? Ooh! And you speak Klingon, too! No, I don't think so. <sighs> I resent your chiseled features, your height, and your easy-going, laid-back demeanor. Can I have your life? No, I have too much cool to fit into that little body. What's a hot babe like that doing in a miserable, smelly, broken-down joint like this? Hey, Bob! Just keep that kind of narration to yourself! You must be tired. You've been running through my mind all day. Hey, I know, but you keep following me anyway. Sorry if this sounds a little squirrely, baby, but I'd like to store you in my cheek pouches for a snowy day. Really? 
I'd like to crack your skull like a nut and bury your brains in the park. Alrighty then! We're really starting to make a connection, eh? Ah, I wish it was long distance. First rule of socializing, Larry. Look at the person you're trying to engage with, particularly when they helped pay for you to be here. The one with the bottomless gut is Michael Hirschman. He's been coming to lefties for years, bending the elbow and running up a classically huge bar tab. He just paid it back, which is partly the reason lefties is open tonight. Yeah? What's up? I was just looking for women. Well, you're looking in the wrong place. It's pretty much a sausage fest here. I mean, I'm pretty, but not that pretty, if you know what I mean. I sure do. No, you don't. Whoever decided that darts is the perfect game for drunks deserves a medal. This sleazy bar gives you the creeps. Fortunately, the creeps are all ignoring you. It feels oddly... This is the famous portrait, Mona Little Louder. You check for a safe behind the painting, but it appears to have been glued to the wall with beer and nicotine. You pick up lefties, but realizing that you have no place to put it, you gently set it back right where you got it. Hey! Play it again! You are in a dimly lit hallway. The peeling wallpaper gives the roaches something to watch. Clutter fills the room. And a filthy drunk wearing filthy clothes sits on the filthy floor, leaning his filthy back against the filthy wall. <sighs> Wanting to be humane to the drunk, you clap him firmly on the shoulder, stroke his head, pat his hand, and get up close to him. So tell me, how are you doing? Ah, oh, thanks for asking, buddy. I'd be just great if only my impetigo would clear up. <laughs> Once more, you get close, but not too close to the drunk. Have you thought about going to a doctor? Nah, you go to a doctor and they just want to make you better. Then you get sick again and you start this cycle of destruction. No thank you. You reel back at the putrid stench of the offensive bum who can probably hear every word we're saying about him. <laughs> You're already well wiped. You pee into the toilet. <sighs> Great, you hit the top, the seat, the tank, everything but the bowl.
Lefty's restroom walls are filled with clever reading material, enough to keep you reading for a long, long time. Here's one. Who do I have to sleep with to get laid around here? Here's one. Down with repression. Here's one. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the precipitate. Here's one. Peeing in public should be a misdemeanor. My, my, aren't we the little sicko today? Here's one. I was here at the crack of dawn, and she was delicious. Here's one. There are two kinds of people in this world. People who can extrapolate from incomplete data. Here's one. Attention, people who say adventure games are dead. Please don't eat the urinal cakes. Here's one. Who do I... Here's one. You grab an ancient copy of Flutter, the magazine of nude skydiving, and settle in to sit and think. You feel a great relief. What's that aroma? You lick yourself. Oh my god! I taste good! Speaking objectively, of course. Carefully finishing your duties, you wipe and toss the newspaper behind the toilet for the next user. You turn on the hot tap. Immediately, steam starts to chug from the spigot. Technically, steam is invisible. This is water vapor, but nobody likes a narrating smartass. You notice some writing in the mirror. Ken sent me. That could be important. I'll have to remember it. You grab a scrap of toilet paper and, cleverly chewing one of your fingernails to the quick, you scrawl the words, Ken sent me, in blood on the paper. You turn off the hot tap and the mist slowly clears. You start to wash your hands, then you realize... So you wash your hands as well as you can and wipe them on the back of your shirt, under your jacket where the wet spots won't show. Jeez, did something die in there? Hey, dork, you got toilet paper stuck to your shoe. <laughs> you take a seat on an available bar stool. Hello? What'll it be? your fine well whiskey. That'll be five dollars, please. You flip five bucks onto the counter. You don't drink the whiskey, but instead decide to carry it with you wherever you go, precariously balanced in an open shot glass. Blah, 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 blah. Twenty-five bucks, same as in town. <laughs> so, what was the setup to that punchline? Larry, have some decorum. You're in the presence of a master storyteller here. Lefty's door is stout and thick, just like you. You must be my only friend in the whole world. So, uh, I'm gonna give you my only possession. 
My only possess- uh, All I got in the world. Besides, what's a guy like me need with a coaster? I mean, what am I? High society? Yeah, baby! You slip a buck into the jukebox and search for a suitably sleazy selection. Apples, apples, apples for sale. Get your fresh apples here, only one dollar. Here's a buck, I'll take an apple. Thank you, sir. Here you go. Um, ew. Like most inanimate objects, it Taxi! Yeah, baby! <laughs> the cabbie isn't here for your sparkling cup. Sure. Taxi! Hey, Mac, where you headed? Be 16 bucks, please. Thanks, kid. Oh, very nice. You click on your mother with that mouth. You wouldn't happen to be fixed for wine, would you? Nope. All right. Be that way. What is that? Your appendix? Welcome to the come and go. Please keep your hands where I can see them. We are open 24 hours for all your unsavory needs. We have no public bathrooms. If you absolutely must, please go in the alley, like everyone else. We keep our birth control devices discreetly hidden behind the counter. If you tap gently on the sign, I will know what you want. This way, our customers need never feel self-conscious or embarrassed. Let us be discreet about this. I understand you are interested in our birth control devices. 
Yes, I'd like one of your finest prophylaxatives. We have all manner of lovers for your stooping pleasure. What sort of lover are you preferring? What length would you like? What girth are you requiring? What texture would you like? What full finish would you like? What excess capacity do you require? What sort of lubrication would you like? What sort of scent would you like? Certainly, yeah, sir. There you go. Thank you. Hey, everybody! This perv just bought a aluminum foil, Vienna sausage, spaghettini girth, sharpe, snakeskin, Cincinnati fire hose capacity, extra picante, old library scented lover. What a perfect! Anything with this machine, it seems to be stuck in permanent demo mode. You take the biggins, the most interesting magazine of the bunch. Yeah, baby! Harvey Steenwine. I don't like it as much as Napa Valley Outhouse, but it is a bouillant and syrupy. Yeah, baby! I can't drink soda. The bubbles go right to the top of my cranium. I mean, literally, I have a defect. I can't. My doctor says too much caffeine stimulates my libido. Hands off! Store employees and thieves only. Yes, you could eat that hot dog, or you could just throw it in the toilet and save yourself 45 minutes.
Wait just a minute, Mr. Shoplifter. Come over here right this moment. Freeze! My aim is improving! Yay for me! Larry, you've always said that shoplifters deserve to be put out of their misery. How are you enjoying your lover, sir? I'm not. Yet. Well, do not fail to wear it if you happen to co-mingle with one of the local working girls. They are highly contagious. Thank you. You're welcome. An undiseased customer is a repeat customer, although we have many repeat diseased customers as well. Thank you! Now please leave, there is no loitering. You pick this thing must be set to I'm sorry, but you have reached a number that is disconnected or no longer in service. Please hang up and dial again. This is a recording. Naturally, someone has already stolen the rectangle of acetate that would ordinarily cover this paper. Thank you for calling the 555-1234 Hot to Trot chat line. Now, swinging singles like you can chat one-on-one -on -one with other swinging singles. Also like you. There's nothing hotter than guys who spend their Saturday nights at home, paying $2.99 a minute to make awkward small talk with invisible strangers, most of whom are other guys. You're also invited to call our psychic legal hotline. Press 2 now to get real legal advice from a psychic. Or press 3 now to get psychic readings from a real lawyer. Or press 4 now to connect with our Tractor Trailer Trekking Institute. Find out how you can earn fast money driving big rigs for 48 hours straight on nothing but coffee and Slim Jims. All lines are down for maintenance. Please try again later. Thank you. Anyone recognize these? Now believed extinct, the last payphone will be shot and killed in 2012 while attempting to rob a liquor store in Conshohocken, PA. Its dying words will be, I just wanted to call information one last time. Sir? Anyone recognize? Now believed it's not. Don't play in this. You have nothing appropriate. You have nothing. Do you need any help? Well, yeah. My name's Roddy Contiki. You don't need help. That's a great thing. Anyway, I'm in a 12-step program. I try never to be more than 12 steps from a liquor store. Like that? I made that up. Anyway, nobody will sell me anything anymore, if you know what I mean. So if you happen to come across any semi-fine fermented beverages, I'd reward any generosity you'd care to show. Okay! I'll remember that, Mr. Contiki. You will? Huh. 
I didn't give you enough credit. Oh, look. Harvey Steenwine. You shouldn't have. Thanks for thinking of me. You are more than welcome. Hmm, syrupy. And reminiscent of a Manischewitz Cream Red Concord. I think I'll share this with my friend Chris. Maybe you know the guy. Kinda this tall, about this wide, brownish hair. I don't think I know him. Used to be a cabin boy. Lives next to the toilet in Lefties. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, here's a thank you from me to you. One of my prized possessions that I don't want. A genuine French army knife. Wow! Thanks! I wouldn't count on it in a fight, if you know what I mean. Thanks again. Taxi! Hey, bud, where we going? <laughs> Lucky 21, pal. Fork it over. Thanks, kid. Hey, baby. Are you from the Caribbean? No, why? Cause you're making me crazy! Oh, that's cute. How you made a pun using the name of a country. Let me see if I can do that. Your attempt to pick me up is real pathetic. It makes me think you don't have a Bahrain in your head. That's, uh, pretty good. Now leave me alone, turkey! That's not one of the buttons that make... You get bad vibes from that machine. Listen to the sound of my voice, Larry. You want to play this machine.
that's not one of... That's not... You get back. That's not. You get back. Hey baby. Are you no, uh, that let me your that's now leave turkey. You don't owe any money right. So uh hiya baby. I hope you own a black cat, because I'd like to get familiar with you. Wow! I've never heard that one before. That is really cool. Thank you. Then let's blow this pop stand and take this party downside. I can't. The Lost Wages basketball team is coming over later, and I promise I'd do them first. Maybe some other time. You're cute in a really poxy Weber kind of way. Oh, you mean Anson Williams? Who's that? The guy who plays Potsy Weber? What do you mean, plays? You really can pick them, can't you, Larry? Any luck on that machine? Yes. All bad. If I wasn't on the casino's board of directors, I probably wouldn't even bother playing. the slots treating you today. Get bent, loser. Excuse me, did I say something to offend you? Cram it! Am I disturbing your rhythm or something? Yes, and your breath smells like a sea urchin died in your mouth, and you tried to cover up the rotten stink with lemon pledge. You're fun! Hello, ma'am. Get bent. Excuse me. Cram it. Am I the... Yes. You're fun. You don't look like you're having much fun. I know. I should go back to my regular job. What's your regular job? I sell software. I'm just in lost wages to try to find true love. Tell me about it. I just did. You give the man a good hearty whiff. Hmm. What is that? Probably my breath freshener. Sometimes I worry that I use too much. Am I using too much? No, you're using the perfect amount. Thanks. So are you, by the way. Your breath smells great. It's a pleasure to speak to someone who really cares about their breath. I agree. Yeah. Yeah! Get a room, you two. You approach the dude and sniff surreptitiously a few times. Sorry, man. I don't have any of that stuff on me. So, like, 
Are you some sort of counterculture type? Rebelling against injustice by symbolically giving the man the finger with your freakish hairstyle? Nah, I just like pissing off my mom. Now that's a fancy elevator. It looks sleek and brand new. A bikini-clad diver is playing with Mr. Wiggles, occasionally grabbing his dorsal fin and going for a ride. You find yourself greatly envying the whale, a feeling wholly unfamiliar to you. Mr. Wiggles is the only teenage sperm whale currently living in Lost Wages. And don't think he doesn't know it, he's been acting like a self-entitled jerk for months. It's some sort of laminated piece of paper. Only important things get laminated. You take the piece of paper. Yeah, baby! Welcome to Chef Jeff's American Tavern Bar and Grill with the all-day, all-night buffet. TV Chef Jeff Hillary's first Lost Wages restaurant features many of the signature dishes from his popular program. Kapwing! More onion powder! But oh no! Somebody has spilled 12 globs of food that aren't from the buffet! Can you find all the poorly hidden globs of extra food? Whatever this is, it... Congratulations! You found a sample of Chicago-style food. A five-inch thick blob of underbaked pizza crust with bratwurst oil dribbled all over it. Congratulations! You found a sample of American Chinese food. Mugu Nuff said. Congratulations! You found a sample of good old American Midwest cuisine. Molten urinal cake. Congratulations! You found a sample of cozy main cuisine, old chum. Congratulations! You found a sample of northeastern cuisine, New England clam chunder. Congratulations! You found a sample of American southern cooking, roadkill in a dishwasher. Congratulations, you found a sample of the politically correct vegan's delight, locally discarded kimchi. Congratulations, you found a sample of Nolan's Fair, fried green lunch meat. You don't need the hot sauce, at least not yet. Congratulations, you found a sample of great traditional French food, grim brulee. Congratulations, you found a sample of Nouvelle Cuisine, Deconstructed Glop. Congratulations, you found a sample of Ludafisk. Congratulations, you found a sample of Modernist Cuisine, Toast-Filled Ravioli on Buttermilk Froth. Congratulations, you win the Leisure Suit Larry Disgusting Buffet Hidden Object Game. You get a bottle of hot sauce. Yeah, baby! You won't need any processed jicama fingers to complete this game. Finally, a game where you don't need processed jicama! You'd be sorry you touched this magnificent multicultural miscalculation. 
Don't bother it while... It's a bin of hearty, stick-to-your-teeth, steel-cut goat meal. You wouldn't like it. It sticks to the roof. Not the roof of your mouth, just the roof. You score the tank of helium. Yeah, baby. Totally. Cabaret. You have. To any Your conversation. With a pretty face and a good story. So I'm dedicating this song to a sly little guy I like to call Equity Crowdfunding. Sweetheart, our fly I don't know who wrote the music and lyrics for this song, but whoever they are, they're not getting paid nearly enough. She's gorgeous and she sings like a filthy angel. What more could any man want? She smelled like tobacco and leather on a rainy night. Like something you want to hold close and never let go. I could tell she was going to be trouble. So I avoided her like the plague, because I don't know what I'm doing around her. Apples! Apples! What are you, hoarding apples? One to a customer! It's a taxi! <laughs> okay, guy, where'll it be? And that'll be 22 bucks, Mac. Thanks, kid. Can I do anything for you? A little drink would be nice. Sometimes my old ex-captain, Roddy Kentiki, drops by and shares a fine beverage. A fine beverage. A little drinky drink with me. You deftly pluck the rose from the vase and carry it with you. Yeah, baby. This door is permanently nailed shut. You'll just have to wait for a sequel to find out what's behind it. It's totally out of reach, which is just as well. Lefty isn't insured. It's a grouper. Its turn-ons include swimming at the beach, quiet times, and not being mounted on a plaque. You rap loudly on the Naga High door. Yeah? What's the password? You read off the strange password you discovered in the John. Uh, Ken sent me? Yeah, baby! Ah, you recognize this setup from a number of art films you've viewed. The gentleman before you is basically working the front desk. 
His employee is upstairs, waiting to provide quick expert services to a discriminating clientele. Since nobody seems to be using it, you glom the remote. Yeah, baby. There's a cabinet filled with a wide variety of sex toys, no doubt for the use of customers. The cabinet appears to be locked tight with a combination lock. The cabinet is locked. The cabinet is... There's a cabinet filled with a the cabinet the cabinet the cab the cab it still has that new you briefly can then you then you you briefly consider unzipping and trying to squeeze it through the cabinet then you recall that incident at the zoo at the Komodo dragon display and all the stitches that entailed then you recall that incident at the bank at the teller's cage and all the legal expenses that entailed you decide to err on the side of caution. Bingo! You use the combination on the coaster to quietly unlock the cabinet. You dispose of the evidence by tossing the coaster behind the cabinet, where it's unlikely to be found for thousands of years. I'll never forget that number. It's burned into my memory, I think. Wait, what was it? Four something, right? The cabinet is unlocked. Were you looking for something? Yes! Score one battery-operated, sleek, slightly sticky personal massager. Yeah, baby. There are no other toys you're interested in taking from the cabinet. They're all either too complicated, too scary, or require too much gymnastic ability. There are no other... There are no other... Someone's gotta say it. That's one handsome moose ass. If you only had a dime for every time you said that. What's happening, man? Just hanging out. What's upstairs? Nothing you'll ever get to see. Why? What is it? It's a woman, little man. And she's too much for you. You're not getting by me. Just put it out of your head. Well, that just makes me want to go up there even more, right? Makes me want to figure out a way to get past you. You're new at this, aren't you? You whip out your wallet and offer your money to prodigious P. Your money's no good here, little man. Put it away. But I'm a paying customer. Look, little man, I'll be honest with you. My girl upstairs isn't my best representative, you know. She may be a little bit past her prime. She may be a little too strung out, a little too spotty. She may be a little contagious. She may have scabies and rabies and crabs. She's got a history of saying yes to every mouth-breathing, lice-infested man, woman, and animal she's ever set her eyes on. But even she's got standards. The remote is out of juice. It's not currently working with the...
You aim the remote at the TV and push the power button. Don't make me wistful. You wouldn't like me when I'm wistful. You've managed to turn on the TV. You've caught Prodigious P's attention, but he doesn't seem interested enough in the program to leave his post by the stairs. You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. Hey, don't touch your knob. We'll be back in two and two. Another boring game show. Prodigious P doesn't seem interested enough in the program to leave his post by the stairs. You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. What you are witnessing is real. The participants are not actors. They're actual litigants with a case pending in California Municipal Court. Another boring real-life white trash catfight show. Prodigious P doesn't seem interested enough in the program to leave his post by the stairs. You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. And thank you for your support. You've been a brick through this whole thing. Another boring commercial for wine coolers. Prodigious P doesn't seem... You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. What you talking about, Willis? Another boring sitcom. Prodigious P doesn't seem in... You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. Please have your pet spayed, neutered, or both, just to be safe. Another boring appeal to common decency. Prodigious P... You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. I love this razor so much, I bought the company. And this railroad. And two United States Senators. Another boring infomercial. Prodigious P... You aim the remote at the TV and push the channel button. Deeper. Huh? All right. But this is wrong. For God's sakes, I am your accountant. Then give it to me 32% harder. It's a good thing that you did that, Larry. A very good thing. You sort of wished him into the porn field, didn't you? You carefully sneak the remote into Prodigious P's pocket, since you won't be needing it anymore. With Prodigious P presently preoccupied, you're able to proceed. This must be the place. Just so you know, if you're into peeking duck play, I need 24 hours advance notice. You start to pick up the candy. What are you doing with that? I'm sorry, did you want it? Sure, I wanted it. That's my candy. Are you sure? It might help me find true love. Well, I am a sucker for true love. Sure, what the heck. Take it. Take it and go find yourself some true love. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mazel tov. Yeah, baby! You strip off your jacket. Either finish getting undressed or get dressed again. Either finish get either finish. You quickly check your fly by zipping it up and down a few times. Zips up, zips down in an instant for easy access. <laughs> yeah, baby. You're still not quite... Echo! The awesome! Echo! The sound bounces around in your head. Awesome! What is that heavenly scent you're wearing? I don't know. Whatever the guy before you was wearing. You strip off the rest of your clothes. 
You carefully guide the condom onto your tumescent little Larry. Smart man, now get Kraken. You hop into bed with the hooker. Ooh. Yes, yes. Nope. Although yes. successful, you feel less than satisfied. Technically speaking, you're no longer a virgin, but for some reason the thrill just wasn't there. You vow to continue your quest until you please your heart, not just your other organs. Either get dressed again or get down to business. You put all your clothes back on. Aha! You realize that the weird snug feeling in your crotch is because you've gotten dressed but failed to remove the lubber. You deftly reach down and pull. It stretches quite a bit before... Ah! What do I do with this? Just give it to me. Some of the other girls and I are having a contest. Cool! To see which customer needed the biggest condom? No. To see which customer has the slowest sperm. You open the window and climb out onto the fire escape. They're on the other side of that closed window. You yank on the fire escape for a moment. Such simple pleasures. You can't reach it from up here. Say, you might have a new career in dumpster diving. Hey! Look at this! You pop up with one perfectly good hammer with just a little bit of mystery goo on the handle. Yeah, baby! Hey, you! Someone in here been eating liver? Hello? Are you sure? It'll cost you ninety dollars. You hand Lefty ten dollars, just for the hell of it. He decides to drop a hint on you. If you're gonna gamble, remember, double down on eleven. Hello? Hey everybody, yeah, here comes a round from the last of the big time spenders. You pop $90 out on the bar in another unsuccessful attempt to buy friendship. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody can eat that much ice cream. <laughs> so, what was the setup to that punchline? Hello? Hey everybody, here comes. You pop $90. Hello? I want to do some serious damage. Give me a vodka. That'll be five dollars, please. You flip five. You don't drink the vodka. Instead, you carry it around in the sh... Hello? Give me a mug of beer. That'll be five dollars, please. You flip five, you down the beer in your pseudo macho style and slam the mug back on the bar. Suddenly, you feel a little woozy. Hello? Give me a mug of beer. That'll be five dollars, please. You flip, you down the beer. This one tastes even better than the last. Don't you think one more seems like a good idea? Hello? Give me a mug of...
That'll be five dollars, please. You flip, you down. This one tastes even better than the last. Hello? One. Give me a mug. That'll be five dollars. You f you down this one. You feel a little lightheaded. You're unsure if you'll be able to walk straight. Shaking your head, you finally clear away the cobwebs and are once again able to walk in your standard studly style. You reach into the storm drain and feel around. Hmm. Jimmy Hoffa's dead body, some box with the name Al Capone on it, and an aviator cap that says Amelia. Nope. Nothing interesting. Taxi! Yeah, baby! <laughs> what the hell have you been eating? Rotten corpse with 40 cloves of garlic? Hey. How come you're always alone when you get in my cab? Just drive. Hey, you got vodka? Let me have a sip of that. <sighs> That's delicious! Hey, thanks for the drinky drink! Uh-oh, Larry. Let that be a lesson to you, Larry. The cabbies in this town are notorious drunks. Never enter a cab carrying anything that's obviously alcohol. Lefties has withstood bar fights, break-ins, and extended hostage situations. It can certainly take anything you can throw at it. You slam down the shot of cheap booze, then with a flourish, break the glass on the floor. Pretty dramatic, huh? Taxi! What the hell of you a... The damage is 18. Thanks, kid. Your breath is like sewage. Just saying. Looks like a really swinging place. How's about letting me in? Show me your pass. I'm not sure I have one. Nobody gets in without a pass. Those are the rules. Move along. Don't make me tell you again. Thank you for leaving. Can't be bribed. I understand. You're too honorable. No, I just don't get the concept. The bouncer takes the pass and scrutinizes it as closely as his overhanging brow will let him. Hmm. You're Rabbi Cornswig? Um, of course. Okay. Welcome to Club 69. Thank you. Shalom. Yeah, baby. Right this way. The music in here is loud enough to kill the herpes. The crowd in back is an impenetrable mass of throbbing humanity, but the vibe up front is casual and inviting.
This guy is the definition of living la vida loca. He's got the sexiest babes, the greatest booze, the hottest fashions, everything. Hey dude, your narrator's got taste. I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer. I'm Adam, and these are my ladies. Taffy, Ruth, Mary Jane, Cadbury, Porcelana, and hey, we're Porcelana and Figurine. They went to the bathroom. Hi, I'm Larry. I'm Ruth. You can call me Baby. Hi, I'm Taffy. You certainly are. I could chew on you for hours. <laughs> I'm Larry. What's your name, honey? Cadbury. Hiya, baby. I'm Larry, and you're stunning. I'm Mary Jean. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You're quite a sight as well. Her scent is incredibly intoxicating. It's like a mixture of clean skin and new carpeting. Please take that away. Yes, Larry, she's stunning, but stop gaping at her and close your mouth. What were you born in a barnasium? Yeah, baby! Her slightly parted baby doll lips, her innocent but knowing expression, her perfect cheekbone structure. They're okay if you like that sort of thing. Hiya, baby. What say you and I get it on? Phew, Larry. You've really got your A-game tonight. Get lost, creep. Hey, sweetheart. What's your sign? Octagonal. As in, stop. I like that. You're fast. No, I'm not fast, but I'm worth every minute of the wait. Woohoo, Larry! I'd really like to get to know you better, Fawn. Just what kind of girl are you? I'm just a girl who can't say no. All right, Larry, this is what you've been waiting for. To nice presents. Oops. How about we get out there on the dance floor, fool around a little? And we could dance some, too. I'm not sure, Larry. You see, I like a particular kind of man. And I don't know if you're the particular kind of man who ends up getting a particular kind of woman like me. I'm not sure I follow you. Ooh, she's resisting gently. It's a come on. Keep going, Larry. If anybody can screw this up, you can. How about we get out and we... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Ooh, keep going. Okay, baby. Ordinarily, I'd be interested in something like that. But we haven't even really been properly introduced yet. Ordinarily, I'd... Most women don't like it when strange men hide strange stuff in there. She doesn't say... I'd rather let her arms do the talking for both of us. Excuse me? Sorry, that wasn't supposed to be out loud. Hey, toots. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Say, Larry, is that a Pez dispenser in your pocket? Or are you just lonely? They're not mutually exclusive. So, uh, what's your name, beautiful? Fawn. Somehow you knew that. Like I'm just a girl. All right. Tonight. Ooh. How about and we? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I Ooh. Keep going. Okay. Ordinarily. Ordinarily. Ordinarily.
Is it just you, or is there a guy in that cage trying to escape? You try to smell the guy in the go-go cage. There's definitely an air of desperation, but that could be coming off of you. You can't be sure from here, but it smells like she's had work done. It... It tastes like floor wax. No, it tastes like dessert topping. Hold on, it tastes like both. Hey, leave those alone. I'm returning the empties for the deposit. You could eat... Enjoy your evening, sir or madam. He's overcome with sorrow at your departure. He's not saying it in words so much, but you can really tell from his expression. We represent the Lollipop Guild. You sip a little of the hot sauce. Feel better now? All cleared out inside? Yeah, baby! Where am I taking you? Lucky 21. Thanks, kid. What you doing? Just hanging out. Yeah, baby. Now you know what they mean when they say two heads are better than one. Now you know. You gonna stand there all night? Yeah, I'll stick it out as long as I can. Quit sniffing at me, you prevert. The chapel is cool and placid inside. The lilting classical music and softly flickering candles give the room an air of serene, peaceful redundancy. In fact, it absolutely stinks of tranquility in here. The ribbons have been attached to the pews with a power stapler and mucilage. You'd ruin them if you tried to take them. It fe Apples! Apples! You step into the elevator and look at the fine selection of floors. Whoa, fancy schmancy. This must be the entrance for the high roller suites. And who's that behind the counter? Does she come here often? Can she date hotel residents? What if they're only pretending to stay here?
You cleverly make eye contact with Faith before talking to her. Yeah, baby. Hey, baby. I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Good evening, sir. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Look at the guns on this cop. Charming. Baby, I'd like to make your day. Now there's a fresh new approach. You know, I think the brave men and women who keep our country safe deserve more than we can ever repay. I guard the penthouses for a couple of filthy rich people who don't even have enemies. It's not quite the same thing. I know! It's horrible! I mean, it's great! It's very important work. Which is it? I'm not sure what you were getting at. You're funny, Larry. I just wish this job didn't take so much out of me. It leaves me with so little energy and desire. You know what I mean? Yes! I mean, as a professional, I've seen a lot of that. It must be very boring up here all by yourself. It is, actually. And it's surprising how tiring it is to stand up here and do nothing all day. How you must long for male companionship. What are you? A psychologist? You're very good. Well, <laughs> I'm not, um, board certified. Yeah, that's it. I'm not board certified. Wow, good save, Larry. So, sweetheart, what's your sign? Libra. But I'm really on the cusp between Libra and Scorpio. And that's okay because Jupiter is in Sagittarius in my fifth house. So I tend to be less judgmental than you think. Like if my rising sign was Leo or something. Now, the moon is in Gemini in my second house, so I... Mommy, make it stop. ...am not getting along very well with my parents, who are both Taurus. Am I boring you? You look a little glazed. No, 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 no. I'm just in awe of the depths of your astrological know-how. Thank you. You're a wonderful listener. Thanks. All I really had to do was stand here. So, you got a name or something? Faith. Faith? What a gorgeous name. Thank you. I've always tried to live up to it. Hmm, is that a good sign or isn't it? Say, Faith, I'm only in town for this one night. How about we get together when you get off duty? You're sweet, Larry, but I don't think I could ever be unfaithful to my boyfriend. Larry, it seems this one's going to require outside assistance. So, Faith, baby. Usually when I'm with someone romantic. Don't just sit here all night doing nothing, baby. Why don't you come with me? Maybe, but right now, I'm working. You're a man of the world, Larry. Perhaps some sort of medical stimulant would help. I'll be back, baby. I'm on duty all night. See you later. Uh-uh. No pressing my buttons. Just once? I don't think so. She smells like leather and authority. I love leather and authority. This was painted by that immortal artist, Jeffrey Burns, who's painted some of the most famous buttocks in Hollywood. This is either Farrah Fawcett or Ryan O'Neill. They're both pretty. This painting is an original Lisa Asmi from her Pleasure and Pain series. The title is Toe Caught Under Refrigerator. This is an original Anthony Velez from his Seduction series. It's called Trying to Get That Last Little Bit. You're supposed to use your imagination about what she's licking. Unfortunately, the model spoiled the mystique by revealing that she was just trying to make her mole wet and glossy. Allison, just tell me more about that one time at the band camp.
Hey, Scott, the girls are here. <gasps> Bruce! Oh, Howard! Oh, Harry! Oh, Harry! No, no, no. Can't get out the magnificent Skyrim? Skyrim. You take the coveralls out of the bushes. Yeah, baby. Here, this is for me. Well, how nice. Thank me. I'm welcome. If you're dropping off the basket and the straps, just leave them outside. Thank you. I'm gonna make you scream over and over. First by taking you like you've never been taken before. Oh. It's not a good time. Thank you, darling. I hope you can break in my mouth at once. It's my husband. Oh God, Ed, get in the closet. It's my wife. Come back later. Look, I've been waiting for an hour and that thing's not getting in. I just dropped the handcuff key somewhere. Quick! Brush it! Brush it! Here, take this key! What? Listen, I'm so sorry. I dropped the gerbil. Get it out! Get it out! Where are you? There's no answer, Larry. Apparently, the honeymoon suite is vacant right now. Come back in an hour. No, we'll be done in three minutes. Don't get it. I'm so close. That better be the cameraman. I got places to be. Take me to the stairs, Sarah. No matter what I'm going to do. Yeah, baby! There's no answer and the door is locked. This service phone only... Jeez, it's good to be back on solid ground. The diver holds her nose and points to your mouth. Wow, Larry, your bad breath is even penetrating the aquarium walls.
When the The key fits in the lock. You turn the bolt and the door easily opens. See how that works there? Yeah, baby! You walk through a maze of twisty little passages, all alike, until finally you walk through an archway and into... Holy guacamole! With the humidity at about 150%, your leisure suit immediately wilts, sadly. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. Au contraire, Pierre. The humidity will make my suit cling to my body and show off my physique. Yeah, baby! She stands before you, totally unselfconscious of her near nakedness. That's encouraging. Yes. You glance at her breasts, then look away. It's not like you don't find them attractive. It's just that you're afraid of boasting a blood vessel. They smell like one quarter moisturizing cream. Her face smells warm, soft, and kissable. To her credit, none of those are usually thought of as smells. You? What are you doing here? And how did you get in? This is a restricted area. Me? I'm Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer, I found a key that fits this door. That's kind of what I do. Well, points for boldness then, Mr. Laffer. Call me Larry. Okay, Larry. I'm Jasmine. Jasmine, how do you hold your breath so long? I can't swim across the kiddie pool underwater. You must have great lungs. Yeah, I guess I'm just well endowed. You can say that again. Come again? Yes. What? How'd you know? Huh? Let's start over. So what do you do here? I work here. I ride Mr. Wiggles bareback. Mr. Wiggles is a very, very lucky man. Mr. Wiggles is my whale. Don't act like you didn't know that. I'm just trying to be charming. Maybe it's working. So Jasmine, tell me, how does one get a gig doing nothing but whaleback riding? Oh, I do much more than that. Riding Mr. Wiggles is just the fun part. I also get to feed him and clean up after him when he gets sick and carefully cleanse his blowhole. Really? That's funny. I've got a... Don't go down that path, Larry. You'll blow it. Ah, I mean, I've got a feeling. A feeling that that's a terrible job. Why don't you quit? What? And <laughs> give up show business? Gee, Jasmine, for a girl who's around fish all day, you sure do smell good. Oh, thank you. It is difficult to stay fresh. Your perfume is fantastic. Thanks, Larry. I guess you could say that I'm somewhat of a perfume connoisseur. Larry, a connoisseur is one who understands the details, techniques, and principles of an art and is competent to act as a critical judge. I actually knew that. Gee, Jasmine, for a girl who's around... Oh, your thanks. La I so... You understand the details, techniques, and principles of perfume and are competent to act as a critical judge? Exactly! Gosh, Larry, it's like you know me. Inside and out. Inside? Wow! Just wow! Perfume's my passion. I have, like, literally a thousand perfumes. Some of them are really, really, really expensive. I don't think there's one I don't have. You always wear perfume? Oh, yes. A lot of the time, that's all I wear. 
Oh my god! Oh my happy, happy god! Well then, I guess it's safe to assume you don't need more perfume. Are you kidding? I'm dying for something new. Something fresh. Something original. But at this point, I don't think there's a man on Earth who could come up with that. There's your cue, Larry. But where are you going to find a unique perfume that she's never smelled before? It's great to meet you, Jasmine. I'll be back in a flash with something you're going to love. No need to hurry, Larry. I'm about to go on break, but I really hope I see you later. Excuse me, that's Mr. Wiggles' food. He might not like it with someone else's body stink on it. But nothing personal. How could I possibly take that personally? You jiggle the nearest locker, hence the name. You jig head. You open the bin. There's nothing inside but a little fetid fish. How much whale did you want to taste? Just a little, I swear. Like, less than half a sandwich. Then nothing doing. We're not cutting up our whale just for half a sandwich. It's firmly rusted. The sign is a list of precautions, such as high salt content pool, remove fillings before swimming. You scoop up a bit of the water and rub it between your fingers. I'm guessing two parts hydrogen, five parts oxygen. You try to wiggle the machinery's whatchamacallit, but it's too firmly anchored to the thingamajig. You walk through a little maze of twisty passages, all alike, until you find your way back to civilization. You stealthily snitch a large, fragrant jasmine blossom. Yeah, baby! Keep your hands to yourself, Larry. This isn't supposed to be an interactive display. That leisure suit really helping you get the girls, eh? Don't ask. The damage is $18. Thanks, kid. <laughs> you
you hold it out to the cat. She looks at it coolly and then goes back to thinking about her next meal. You hold it out to the cat. You hold it out. I ain't selling no sissy drinks here. Try again. Hello? May I please have a glass of your delicate white Zinfandel, sir? Hey, was that your voice? That'll be five dollars, please. You flip five bucks onto the counter. You delicately sip the wine until it's all gone. I find this impudent and sassy with the slightest hint of impertinence. Suddenly, you feel a little woozy. You feel a little lightheaded. You're unsure if you'll be able to walk straight. Shaking your head, you finally... Taxi! You rummage around in the dumpster. Hmm. Taxi! Where'll it be, pal? Seventeen bucks, pal. Thanks, kid. Pass, please. The bouncer takes the pass and scrutinizes. Hmm. You're Rabbi Cornswig. Um. Okay. Welcome to Cl Thank you. Right this way. I'd really like to- I'm just a girl. All right. Tonight. Ooh. What if I take you away from here, Fawn? We could go to my place. Assuming you had a place. That sounds fun. Just as long as you're not cheap. I prefer men with means. Means? What kind of means? I like what any woman likes, Larry. I like flowers. I like sweets. I like jewelry. Can you get me those things, Larry? Can you get me everything I need to feel luxurious and free and totally ready to give you everything you've always dreamed of? Everything? And more. You see, I'll do anything for the right man, Larry. Anything. Are you the right man, Larry? Are you going to be the right man for me tonight? Oh, my. She certainly has you standing at attention. Could Fawn be the one, Larry? Your one-way ticket to fulfillment? Okay, baby. Oh, yeah, Larry. baby. I just love candy. Oh, yeah, Larry. Baby. I just love roses. Oh, yeah, Larry. baby. I just love diamonds. Oh, Larry, I just love your presence. Dance with me, you adorable fool.
the crowd goes wild. Larry, that was incredible. I've never done that with a man before. It was so exhilarating. Are you as turned on as I am? Always. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I hope. Then my answer is yes. Oh, God, yes. Yes, Larry, I will. You will what? Why, marry you, of course. After all, I could never be with a man who wasn't my husband. Only if we were together in the eyes of the entire world could I really give myself to you completely, utterly, heart, soul, and body. I'll also need $200 to reserve the honeymoon suite at Caesar's Phallus. I'll wait for you here. Once you've got the money, we'll rush over to the wedding ready. And at long last, we can be husband and wife. Holy cow, Larry. It looks like your dreams are about to come true. Yeah, baby! You give Fawn your wallet. All right! Two hundred dollars! Thank you, my sweet. I'm going to the casino right now to reserve the honeymoon suite at Caesars. Then I'll meet you at the wedding ready next to the casino. Don't be late, my love. Fawn hands you back your wallet, $200 lighter, and rushes off. Congratulations, Larry. You're one step closer to connubial bliss. Yeah, baby! You have an amazing lifestyle! Thank you. Yeah, I saw it on TV and I thought, hey, that sounds good. Enjoy your evening, sir or madam. Taxi! Where to? That'll be an even. Thanks, kid. Fawn is standing at the ready at the end of the room. Next to her is a man dressed like some sort of clergyman. Larry, we're all ready for you. We do have one little thing to take care of, though. It's $100 for the marriage certificate, the ceremony, and the decorations. The decorations are extra? If you're too cheap to spring for them, I'll just take them down. Larry? No decorations? No, no, leave them up. I'll... I'll take care of it. Of course you will, Larry. After all, how often does a man who isn't Larry King get married? Hot yeah, dog! Baby. Now we're ready to knock this thing out. Finally! You all settle into basic position. A hush falls over the players at home. Barely beloved. Sorry, let me restart that. Merely beloved. Jim. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. You know how I get. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join this man and this woman. Blah, 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 blah. Do you, Lance Lassiter, take this woman? It's Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? I thought you said. Just go. Do you, Larry, Larry Laffer, take this woman? Blah, blah. Sickness and hell forsaken and the rest. I... I do. Do you, Fawn Forschwanger? Forschwanger? Take this man to be... to be your blah blah blah, honor and comfort and bail? Right. I mean... I do. You've got the ring. I have to have another ring? No, no, no. I've already got the ring. Keep this thing moving. Then by the power invested in me, Jimmy Ted hereby declares you done and done. Congratulations, pleasure doing business with you. I'm headed down to the wine cellar. It's inventory time again. <laughs> Employees only, I'm sure y'all understand. Fawn throws her arms around you and almost kisses you. Oh, Larry, isn't it romantic? 
What's she talking about? Did something romantic happen here by mistake? I'll meet you at the honeymoon, sweet Larry. Ready to give you my all, my everything, my very soul. Don't keep me waiting. I can't wait to take advantage of you. She's not done with that yet? Well, congratulations, Larry. You're a married man. Time to get over to the honeymoon suite and hang a sign on the door. Gone consummate. You have nothing with which to manipulate the marble. Use your key. You turn the bolt. There's nobody here. Jasmine must have gone on break. You never know when a recently deceased squid will come in handy. Yeah, baby. You start to pick up the creel, but it's sopping wet. You decide you don't really need all those squid. Hi there, little fella. Who's a cute sperm whale? You are. That's who. Mr. Wiggles gives you the cold, wet shoulder. You look for a convenient way to administer the hot sauce to Mr. Wiggles. Carefully, you tip the hot sauce bottle into Mr. Wiggles' blowhole and pour out the entire contents. Bubbles rise to the top of the sauce as it slowly glugs down into the whale's inner recesses. Don't try this at home. Easy there, big fella. He can't take any more. He's gonna blow! Deep within the aquarium, the overspiced whale gives a mighty heave. Something floats to the surface of the aquarium. Mr. Wiggles swims away, snorking constantly. You kneel and scoop the water towards yourself until the amber grease is within reach. It's gooey and revolting, and you stick it in your pocket without a second thought. You're not really capable of second thoughts. Yeah, baby. Is that you, Larry? Larry. It sure is, baby. Come on in. I'm ready for you. Yeah, baby. You walk into the honeymoon suite. Your blushing bride is waiting for you. Hello, Larry. You're here at last. Forgive me if I'm a little shy. I've never been with a man who meant so very, very much to me. Excellent! Larry, your breath is making it harder for me to love. Ah! Larry, 
We're married now. No more talk. No more dancing. It's time for you and me to consummate. I just need some music or something. You know, let's make the mood even more perfect. Technically, that's not possible. Shut up. I mean, don't be that way, oopsie poopsie. You tweak the radio dial. There's nothing but static on this station. You tweak the radio dial. You tweak... Jeez, why can't they make a radio that gets stations at all these little numbers? Yeah, baby! We'll be back to our commercial-free four-hour Barbra Streisand Marathon after this commercial message. I don't understand that. How many times has this happened to you? You've just gotten married, and you forgot to get the perfect bottle of wine for your honeymoon. Don't ask the hotel to send up their finest bottle of rotten, overpriced garbage. Don't settle for trashy, boxed wine they sell at the convenience store. The taxi driver will probably drink it all, and you'll end up in a fiery crash. Don't let that happen to you. Call Snappy Liquors. We deliver anywhere, anytime, in five minutes or less. How do we do it? That's what I'd like to know. Simple. We buy in bulk and pass the savings on to you. That doesn't answer the question. So call now, 555-8039. That's 555-8039. Liquor quick with Snappy Liquors. And now, back to more Barbara. Fawn turns off the radio. I thought you wanted music. Larry, wine would be even better than music. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Go order us some of that wine, Larry. Please? It'll make everything absolutely perfect for our, you know, canubial joining. That's so romantic. Right away, dearest. Yeah, baby! Where you going? That'll be sixteen bucks, please. Thanks, kid. You don't need... You hold the squid out to the cat. You quickly grab one of the used syringes lying all too plentifully around lost wages. With a startling adeptness that raises questions about what you do in your free time, you extract the fluid from the cat's musk glands. The cat runs off without so much as a vengeful backwards glance that might foreshadow a sequel, or at least a really bloody scene later. Congratulations, you've got the best available local civet. Score! Yeah, baby! Snappy Liquor Delivery, we deliver liquor in a snapper. Yes, I just heard your ad on the radio, and I'd like to purchase some fine wine. Where do you want it delivered? The Honeymoon Suite at Caesar's Palace, please, and step on it. All of our fine wines have been stepped on, sir. That's why they're fine. Oh, very sophisticated. And your order has been processed. We'll send one of our hottest young men immediately. Thanks for calling. What did he mean, hottest? You again? I'm gonna need... 
Thanks, kid. Come on in. I'm ready for you. Oh, Larry, it's you. I thought it was that cute young delivery boy again. Hmm, what does she mean by that? Oh well, you decide to let it pass. After all, this is your wedding night. For you. Enchanté. Here's to us. Here's to you, Larry. All right, Larry. The stars have aligned. Love is all around. Life's sweetest reward. The sun is gonna surely shine. Now use those three words every young woman in love longs to hear. How about yeah, now? Baby. Yes, Larry. This is it. This is what we've been waiting for. Goody! Are you relaxed, my love? Yes! Are you ready for me? Yes! Oh, yes! Then, let's get ready to rumble! What happened? Whew. It was great for me. How was it for you? Uh, is that it? That's it. Thanks for everything, Lance. It's Larry. Thanks for the ring, the candy, the money, the this, the that, the contents of your wallet. You did forget to pay me for the wine. Oh! I left you a few bucks. I'm not totally heartless. Just mostly. And thanks for the wine and... Oops! <laughs> you got me monologuing. See you later, sucker. Form, sweetheart? A lesser man would be torn to shreds by this turn of events. But not you, Larry. You've got optimism. You've got resilience. You've got to find a way out of here. Clever, Larry. You managed to work your knife out of your pants and use it to slice the bungees until... Well done, Larry. You're free. You quickly dress. Now you're feeling ready to go back out and conquer the world. Again. The cheap knife broke in the process, so you dispose of it as any responsible gamer would do. This is from artist Mark Chuburka's Horn Dog series. It's imaginatively entitled Number Four in Horn Dog series. You dispose of the cord you cut through and save the other three for some sort of demented shenanigans. Yeah, baby. One glass is enough, Larry. You want to be able to function. Leave the bucket where it is. which are all, oh, thank God, a human being. Come, join us. How you doing tonight? Okay. All right, I didn't want your whole life story. Thank you. Wow, there's a show going. Larry, keep your voice down. Wow, there's a show going. Can I continue now? Thank you. I was taking off my shoes, and she saw my toes, which are all You take the nearest available... 
<laughs> sir, sir, I do the bodily function humor in here. You just sit there and look. Well, you just sit there. As I was saying, I was taking off my shoes and she saw my toes, which are all twisted and funny looking. I said the only thing that came into my mind. I said, sorry, when I was a kid, I had tolio. Then I took off my pants and she saw my knees, which are all knobby. And I said, I'm sorry, when I was a kid, I had measles. Then I took off my pants and she said, let me guess, small cocks? Thank you, true story. So, how many people we have here from out of town? Don't answer me, that was a rhetorical question. I can tell you're out of town by the way you're dressed, sir. No offense to your leisure suit. You know brothels are legal in this state, right? Don't say anything, that was another rhetorical question. Of course you know brothels are legal, everybody knows that. Speaking of hookers, this drunk guy thinks he's going into bordello, but he actually wanders into a podiatrist's office. And he thinks the nurse is the hooker. She says to him, okay, go around the screen and take off your pants and put it through. So he goes around the screen, takes off his pants, and puts his family jewels through the screen. The nurse walks in and screams. She says, that's not a foot. And he says, I didn't know there was a minimum. Well, you've been a trooper, but they're giving me the light. Either that, or they're trying to set me on fire. So stay here. Tracy Von Felcher will be right out to ask the musical question, Tears of Joy. Chaz Racamundo's been on drums. I've been Jeff Schitzfeld. Thank you, Lost Wages. You pull the seat out so we'll be cool. We give our hearts away too easily. What, are you my only customer tonight? Lucky 20... I'm not really in the mood. I'm not... You ain't trying to get out. <laughs> what do I do that? Nobody oh. take it. Oh, oh. What the flag is. Oh. Oh. Take it. Oh. 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 Yeah. Larry, next time you take a cab ride, be prepared to pay. You get back. You get back. You get You don't look like you're having much fun. I know. What's your regular? I sell software. Tell me if I just... You give the man a goon. Hmm. Probably my breath fresh. Sometimes I work. No. Nah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Get a room. You lick all me. Ah. Uh, a long, long time ago, I had one that looked just like that. You peer closely. Is this probably what's wrong with it? Doesn't stay. You don't have to tell me. Sometimes I don't think women appreciate what a practical, sensible, and stylish choice it is, and what that says about a man. Listen, I spent my life being shot down by women for wearing polyester, 
and I don't care. It's a miracle fabric. Right on! Tell like it is, mister. Call me Larry. <laughs> that is so weird. My name is Larry, too. You don't owe it. That's not That's not That's not When will this shift end? It'll be sixty. Thanks, kid. You rap loudly on the Nagahai door. Yeah? What's... Uh... Damn fool, ha... Uh... Damn fool... Give him the right... Uh... Damn... You don't need to turn on the... You rap loudly on the Nagahai door. You read all. Uh, yeah, baby.
That's not going to help Lefty at Here! This is for me. Well, I'm You attach the bungee cord securely to the fire escape. Well, I'm you can't add a bungee cord while the first one is attached to the fire escape. But you can detach the one on the fire escape, link more. Yeah, baby! You can only attach one but You can't add a bu- It would be nice if you could- Here! Well, I'm what? You detach the bungee cord from the fire escape. You attach the bungee cord securely to the fire escape. It's you, Le You hook the other end of the bungee cord to your belt loop. What could possibly go wrong with this arrangement? They're on the other side of that. You yank, you yank on the f You remove the bungee hooks from your belt loop and the fire escape. Disassembly. You whack. With the bungee attached, you hurl yourself off the fire escape. Geronimo! Oh! Your equipment was way too long. Ever think you'd have that problem? As life ebbs from you, your body is picked clean by wandering bums, muggers, and raccoons. And then, like the miracle of spring, life begins anew. Yeah, baby! You attach the bungee cord securely to the fire escape. You hook the other end of the bungee cord to your belt loop. I'm feeling good. With the bungee attached... Geronimo! Oh! Your equipment was... Ever think as long and then... You attach the bungee cord securely to the fire escape. You hook the other end of the bungee cord to your belt loop. I'm feeling good about With the bungee... Got yeah, baby! Ta-da! And the judges give it a 10. You accidentally lost the hammer in the window, but that's okay. You won't need it anymore. You got the pills. You unhook yourself from the bungee cords and dispose of the <laughs> Drying your Yeah, but this time you come up Hello? What'll it be? I want to yeah, do baby. some serious damage. Give me a vodka. That'll be five dollars. You flip five. You don't drink the vodka. Tax 
Roxy! Yeah, baby! <laughs> Maybe you should like... Lucky 20. Thanks, kid. You let yourself in. Yeah, baby! Larry, I was wondering where you'd gone. You have anything for me? You yeah, call baby. out your ode to Larry and lay it on her. <gasps> what is this? I call it Ode to Larry. Oh, Larry, Ode to Larry. Ooh. Did someone just yodel? Anyway, it's the first in my new line. Really? I didn't realize you were a parfumier. Why, yes. Yes, I am. Ever since before. And I created this scent just for you. In fact, I've created several scents today just thinking about you. But this is the only one I bottled. Intriguing. Jasmine opens the bottle, waves it in the air, and inhales the lingering aroma. You bad boy. It's Jasmine. What else? She inhales again. And is that civet? Sort of. Ooh la la. And there's something else. Tabasco? Well, maybe just a little. Do you like it? It's a very unusual combination. There's something else. Something rare and valuable. That's right. Wow, Jasmine, your nostrils are like two beautiful bloodhounds. My god, you know just what to say, don't you? <laughs> Is that ambergris? Exactly. How exotic! And it's from Mr. Wiggles, too! What? You'd be surprised. Huge whale like that, you just give him a little bitty bottle of Tasteless Dave's butt burner hot sauce. What? Of course, you can't dilute it in the aquarium water. You have to pour it straight into the blowhole. What? You gave hot sauce to Mr. Wiggles? You screaming douche puppet! Screaming what now? How dare you assault a defenseless whale! Defenseless? He weighs 40 tons! Mr. Wiggles is my best friend! You're horrible! I never want to see you again! Get out and don't come back! So I bet you don't want to know how I got the civet. Get out! How about we make passionate love just once, for old time's sake? I'm so sorry, but your breath. I think I'm going to asphyxiate. Yeah, baby. Ah. You yeah, hand baby. over the Spanish fly. What's this? Recreational drugs? She opens the bottle and examines the pills. This looks like the real stuff. She pops one of the pills. Oh, yes! I can feel it working. I feel so warm and tingly inside. So ready. Oh, so anxious. I don't know how much longer I can help myself. This is just what I need to put me in the mood. Thank you. Are you ready? I sure am. Job be damned, I need it. And I need it now. I'm going home and giving one of these to my boyfriend. We're gonna tear up the sheets. Thanks again. These are great. Oh well, there are millions of fish in the sea, Larry. Yeah, but she had something special. Live ammo. This 
button won't depress. There's a little keyhole nearby, so apparently this button is in locked position. Forget about it, Larry. You'll never get in there. You press the button, and the penthouse elevator door slides open. Aha! Progress! Yeah, baby! You travel a short distance up in the elevator, down a hall, into another elevator, and up another flight. Whoa! This is totally wicked! Someday, it's gonna be me living in one of these places. And then, watch out, pedestrians! Larry Laffer has a balcony! This painting is simply entitled, Penis. Well, I don't get it. The artist, Justin McMiniman, entitled this piece, Juice Box. He claims it sums up contemporary American culture as unhealthy, mass-produced, and environmentally ignorant. Another in the Justin McMiniman series, this one is entitled, Blow Me. He describes the painting as a celebration of the jug as a traditional American woodwind instrument. He also likes that a jug reminds him of boobies. Another in the Justin McMiniman series, this one is entitled One Percent. He later explained in an interview that the painting expresses his inner torment that only one percent of women have jugs this large. He also likes it because a jug reminds him of a woman's breasticle. The sliding door is unlocked. Oh, man. Bummer. I spent this whole night looking for a door I can open by sliding a newspaper underneath and poking the key out the other side of the keyhole so that it falls on the newspaper. Every computer game character gets to do that except me. It isn't fair. Oh, well. Let's see the deck. You step out onto the balcony, and an incredible vista greets you. Holy shnikes! You take in the sweeping skyline, the towering eight-floor casino, the brunette in the hot tub at the neighboring penthouse. That is positively the most drop-dead gorgeous woman I have ever seen. Imagine how beautiful she must be when you're standing within a hundred feet of her. Larry, haven't you learned not to judge someone by looks alone? I can't hear you! La 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 la! It's hard to be seductive when you're shouting at the top of your lungs. From here, she just smells like casino fumes. You open the sliding glass. It smells very strongly of other people's bedroom. There have been men and women together in here. You can tell. It sure is swank, though. And from the artwork, I'm pretty sure this is a man's room. It smells familiar. Keep it quiet. You never know who might be under the bed. You've already broken in. Now you're going to defile the man's mattress? What John Waters movie did you just crawl out of? From the aroma of the bed, you're guessing... This is a print entitled Bad Mr. Winky by Jason Zisk, who went on to design a line of offensive greeting cards, offensive samplers, and offensive doilies. Yes! Yes! This is so true about dogs and the way they hide bones. It's like, why did you ask for the bone if you were just going to bury it? Finally! A piece of art that really speaks to me about life. This is a print of Alex Kotkin's still life, The Fruit of My Loins, 1979, $240 at the Boffenfrau Gallery. You open the closet door. Whoops! A deflated love doll tumbles out onto the floor. Ever the gentleman, you help her up. I'm sorry. 
I didn't mean to startle you. Hey, baby, you're beautiful. Want to come with me? You nod her head. Score! You tuck the love doll into your jacket. At least now you don't have to go through the rest of this game alone. You close the closet door. That's better. Now there's less evidence that I've been here. You stop. You inflate the love doll with the helium. And the two of you lift gently off the deck together and float through the air. It's a good thing you've always been a lightweight. Whee! You sail closer and closer to the woman of your dreams. Unfortunately, somebody chewed a couple of extra orifices in the poor thing. Well, at least you can say that you left a lasting impression on lost wages. You give you got my come and get you give you got my wallet got my breath spray and I'm filled with vitamin Larry come and get me ladies you go down in the elevator through a hallway through a set of double doors up a spiral stair You snag the little kit. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. You press the... Yeah, you inflate the love doll with the helium. It empties the canister so you toss it away. And here, nearly 100 feet up in the mysterious troposphere, the breeze and swirling air currents begin to tug at the love doll. Get a good look at her while you still can. She looks like a sultry beach ball. You squish her face around a little and it pops right back into place. That's sexy and disturbing. So, when did you first come out of the closet? Oh, like she doesn't hear that all the time. She smells like a new shower curtain. As you wish. You gently lay her on a convenient chaise lounge and have your way with her. Afterwards, there's the usual whine of, Why won't you cuddle with me? But she flatly refuses.
A good stiff breeze, is there any other kind, kicks up and almost tears her from your hands. Thanks to the lift coefficient generated by your leisure suit's enormous lapels, you feel yourself being pulled upward. The love doll catches a convenient crosswind and she carries you up, up and away. It's a good thing you've always been a lightweight. You sail closer and closer to the woman of your dreams. Whee! You touch down gently on the other deck and stick the landing. You release the love doll and she floats away gently in the moonlight. The woman in the hot tub looks mightily impressed with your dramatic entrance. Yeah, baby! The two of you make direct eye contact. It's like a bolt of lightning goes into your eyes, down your body, and blows your toes off. She gazes at you with amusement and smoldering interest. Her face smells extremely symmetrical. That doesn't make any sense, does it? This is the most perfect face you've ever seen on anything. Hamana, hamana, hamana! Hello yourself. I'm Eve. So I, uh, just dropped in to say hello. Get it? Dropped in? Larry, it was one of the most foolish, spectacular, romantic things I've ever seen. And I'll never forget it. <laughs> well, it kills the mood a little when you do that. Hey, gorgeous. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer? Hi, Larry. What an attractive leisure suit. Oh, I so miss them. It's refreshing to meet a man with so much self-confidence that he's willing to flaunt the fickle trends of fashion mores and deeply travel the road of his own secure masculinity. Was she talking to you, Larry? Well, uh, Eve, I've always felt um, it's a look that's right for me. A man has to do what a man has to do. That's what I always say. I agree completely. I'm so tired of men who wear or say anything just to gain a woman's favors. You clearly would never do anything like that, Larry. And I so love what you are wearing. You have a sense of humor. Oh, Larry, you are one special man. I've been watching you, Larry. <laughs> Larry Laffer, you try too hard. But you have a good heart. Why don't you slip into this water and we'll see if we can really get to know each other. What? Uh, yes. Of course I'd like to join you. In fact, I can think of nothing I'd enjoy more. This reminds me of a big glass of champagne. You can join me. If you promise not to add any bubbles of your own. Give me a minute, Eve. Don't keep me waiting too long there. Slow down, boy. The water is just a little under body temperature. Immersing yourself would be immensely pleasurable. You quickly check your f zits up. You quickly check your fl zits up. You strip off your jacket. You strip off the rest of your clothes. Yeah, baby. You slip into the hot tub. You take no time to adjust to the water's temperature, since you really can't feel anything right now except the deafening beat of your own heart. That's better. Isn't it? It's, it's, yeah. <sighs> you turn the valve a little. There. Isn't that better? You turn the valve a little. You don't like so many bubbles? You turn the valve a little. You don't like the way I had it set?
You turn the valve a little. That's fine. You turn the valve a little. Okay, that's good. You turn the valve a little. Really? You turn the valve a little. Fine. You turn the valve a little. What are you up to? You turn the valve a little. Larry, what are you doing? You turn the valve a little and the bubbles shut off entirely. Larry, I think you did that deliberately. I'm going to tell my friend Roberta on you. If you turn the bubbles back on, she'll think you don't like looking at her nipples. So try not to be an idiot. Yep! At the risk of appearing trite, would you like an apple? Trite? Hardly. I've been waiting for something. Anything from you, Larry. Besides, I'm horny as hell. And you're the only man in sight. Let's go. Me first. And with that, she disappears under the churning water. Congratulations, you finally got Larry off to a great start. I'm Al Lowe. And speaking of great starts, I want to thank the thousands of Kickstarter backers who made this game possible, and the amazing, talented folks whose names will soon appear here. Thank you for reloading Leisure Suit Larry. Sometimes we give our hearts away too easily to any Johnny come lately with a pretty face and a good story. So I'm dedicating this song to a sly little guy I like to call equity crowdfunding. Sweetheart, our flight of passion had a quick start. But now I've nothing but a sick heart Watching your numbers rise and rise Up late, hoping to hear your latest update But I've run out of love to donate There aren't any tears left in my eyes I'm tracking, you're backing I hear you saying that you adore me I'm paying to stay in But will you stretch your goals for me? Sweetheart I love 
has made me a bit street smart. You give my motor such a kiss. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now. So